Well, um, in the midst of all this, and um, somebody who is probably regarded by the mainstream media as almost the devil, I would think, just quietly, um, and uh, a leading purveyor of misinformation uh, and of conspiracy theories, um, would be Counterspin. Um, and it's Principal Kelvin Elp, and he joins us this morning. Kelvin, that'd be right, wouldn't it? You'd be the primary demon of the mainstream media at the moment. No, it would indeed be the devil spawn, you're correct. Yeah. Um, listen, tell me something about yourself, because I'm, I'm, rather than what you say, I'm really interested in you. Um, you met my producer, Shane. Oh, must have been at summer, was it, when you came down south on your tour with your partner, um, and he met you in Cromwell, and you had a cup of coffee or tea. It was, it was midwinter, and... Um, it was snowing at the time. Oh, was it? Good man, actually. Oh, okay. All right, well, there you are. Well, it's just, it's just, it just wears shorts and jandals all the time. I always immediately think it's summer, but of course, Shane <laughs> does that in winter as well. I forgot. Um, listen, one of the things you said is that um, you sold up everything and you now tour New Zealand in your van with your partner, uh, making a career, if you like, um, of, of what you're doing. Is that right? No, we certainly don't make a career of this. I mean, um, anyone who takes this side of the equation in any public debate, you're never going to become a millionaire. You'll find all of the people profiting are from those pushing the big lie. Okay. Now, what drives Kelvin Elp? Why did you do what you did? Which was to sell up everybody, get in a van and tour the country and, and run your own, if you like, news media organisation? Because we wanted to give people out there a voice, the ones who are never heard from, the ones that the mainstream media don't go out and talk to. These are the farmers, these are the people who have lost businesses, all those have been mandated, mandated out of jobs, you name it. We wanted to take the platform to them, have them stand up and through their own words, instead of manipulation by mainstream media, have their voice heard. And it was actually emotionally very taxing. There's me, I'm... I'm I'm not usually one to be emotional, but I tell you what, some of the stories that we heard, some of the uh, physical carnage that we saw, it definitely come close close to breaking some of us. Right. You mean in terms of losing jobs and things like that? The emotion and, and people's jab injuries as well. Oh, uh, now, because you're anti-vaccine, is that correct? You're talking about this current one. It's not a vaccine by any stretch of the imagination, so no, I can't be called an anti-vaxxer there. Um, well, I, I just is, call but, it a jab. Okay, but it's it is not. a vaccine. Definition has been changed. Well, no, I mean, everybody knows it's a vaccine. If you say it's not a vaccine, that's fine, but, I mean, for most of New Zealand, it would be regarded as a vaccine, wouldn't it, Kelvin? Oh, yeah, because cause that's what the, they've been told to um, accept through the messaging from government. Well, the, no, but the, sorry, I don't want to get into specifics. I want to go back to... What, at, at what point did you think in your life that there was something underway that needed to be fought? Uh, can you can you find a, a moment that you just went, that's it, I'm out of here, I'm, I'm going to resist the system? I've been resisting the system from day one. I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm quite lucky in that respect. I've never been asleep. You know, some people say, hey, when did you wake up? So I've never been asleep. I've just been waiting for you people to catch up. And here we are. So we and my mother. My mother had a strong influence on me. All right. She's, so um, where did you? Where did I'm you, a mummy's boy. I like. I like to make that public now. I'm a mummy's boy. I absolutely love my mother. Okay. Where did you grow up? Where were you born? Born, bred, and raised in South Auckland in Mangere. Okay. Sixty Eight Valley Street, Mangere, to be precise. And you went to school where? Which 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 secondary school did you go to? I went to Mangere College. Okay. And do, were you good at anything? Were sub, some subjects you were better at than others? Uh, science. Well, I did a world's first. <clears throat> I did a world's first when I was fourteen at the secondary school of science fair at the Auckland Museum. I had people coming from overseas just to look at what I've done. So you can tell I've got a bit of a brain. Okay. Did you then after you left school? Did you finish school set UE or whatever? <clears throat> no, I bailed as soon as I could because to me it was more important uh, getting drunk, chasing skirt, and getting the car. You know. Oh, well, yes, I suppose you're sort of normal 15-year-old at that point. Um, at yep. what point did you stop being a normal 15-year-old, though, and teenager and become, you know, the, the sort of rebel that you are now? Um, well, I didn't. I was a rebel then as well. Um, 
My, my mother always taught us, believe nothing blindly, you question everything, especially if it comes from someone in authority. And I tell you what, that has held true to this day. The amount of cover-ups and lies. Now, people say, well, how do you know you're a conspiracy theorist? Um, I'm actually a conspiracy factualist. It is a fact there's a conspiracy against a lot of people in this country. And we have the facts and evidence. We talk about counterspin being fact and evidence-based. If we were wrong, why don't they ever attack us on what we present as opposed to that hominem attacks on our on our um, selves? Now, you've been um, involved in, if you like, the sort of counter-revolutionary activities for a long time. Um, I'm reading your wiki entry, which says that in 1996 you set up the New Zealand Armed Intervention Force as a mercenary organisation. <coughs> Is that correct? Uh, well, I don't know who wrote Wikipedia. I mean, I think my profile on there, I keep going on there just to find out about myself, to get myself updated on what's happening with me. Because, as you know, anyone can actually change those things. I can go into your one. I can I can say your, all of a sudden, I don't know, whatever, ascribe whatever to you. And it would be unchallenged until someone spots it, changes it. Um, so all of that... Well, no, I've asked you a question. After I, left in, after I had a fallout with the New Zealand Army, yeah. I was recruited three months later. This is all public record. And, yeah, I'd, I've, I'd done a lot of work overseas. For over 20 years, I was um, working with intelligence people and all sorts, and that's where I got to see the crap that goes on, especially in the Solomon Islands with the Australian New Zealand um, intelligence apparatus taking in suitcases of cash, so I can tell you this for sure, under diplomatic immunity to bribe politicians to bring down the government under votes and no confidence. Fact. Yeah. You claim to have a Maori passport to travel in the Solomon Islands, is that right? I don't claim I have one, and I used it twice to go in and out. So that, that's fact as well, because I physically have it. A, a Maori, but there's no such thing as a Maori passport, is there? There obviously was, because it were. Remember, a passport's only to pass through other ports. It's never to um, come into or leave your own country. Your own passport doesn't get stamped here. It only gets stamped abroad. But now, it's, of course, it's all going AI and electronics, so you're not going to need that soon. Right, okay. Um, and... You then, um, so what happened between sort of your time in the Solomon Islands and coming back and things like that, which was what the start of this century, and for the last 20 years before you got involved in the, the whole COVID mess? What were you doing then? Uh, oh, geez. I've got passports full of everything from China to Panama, Mexico, Chile, Brazil, you name it. I've been all over the place you throughout Europe. I'm doing all sorts of things. Yeah, what, so what, I, what sort I of get, things were you doing, though? Just give us an example. Oh, some business, some travel, some operational work. What, you mean military operational work or private agents' work or things like that? Yeah, just private private, uh, private work, yeah. Okay. But that, cool. that's no great secret. I mean, people have been trying to make a meal of it for a long time. And, no, um, no, no, I'm not uh, trying to make a meal of it. I'm genuinely interested. I know, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about you, Michael. Yeah, okay. I'm not talking about you. I said people have been. Otherwise, I would have said, Michael, you've been doing this. Okay. People, right. What people have got to understand about me is when I say something, I mean what I say. I won't hint something to you. I'll tell you directly. Okay. Um, at what point did you... So you became, um, I think, in our mood of uh, Donald Trump and Steve Bannon um, and some of those uh, functionaries <laughs> working in the Trump campaign. Um, when did you set up Counterspin? Counterspin Media was, uh, we had our first uh, show, um, April 25th, the Anzac Day, of course, um, 2021. Right. So we've been done about 16, what, 18 months, 16, 17 months. Um, and it was, I, we chose that day for a specific reason, because you think of all the people who have given their lives overseas on what they believe. Now, whether they went to overseas on a mass sacrifice, who knows, because let's face it, what they fought for, we certainly haven't got. So that was a pretty much a waste of damn time. Um, but we wanted to show that the fight's still not over. And um, because we've sort of in, uh, entered the information war more so now than anything, um, that was the best day to launch Counterspin on a fact and evidence-based people's platform. We do not, despite what anyone says, we do not get overseas funding in any way, shape or form. We are not funded by the CCP. Although, if um, G is out there listening, please send me a check. I'm, look, I'll sit with the devil if it helps me know what he's up to in order to take him down. You did form your own political party though, didn't you? Um, our New Correct. Zealand. Is that right? And I think Correct. you also contested the Tokoro by-election, well, it must be about 10 years ago, is that right? Oh yeah, I wanted to troll uh, Honey Harawera. 
I wanted to go after him because he stole my 1% transaction tax policy that was to replace all other taxes in the country with a 1% transaction tax because that way we would um, grow the economy exponentially and we would destroy the um, ability for the banks to rip us off heaps because that's where most of the um, exchange settlements and clearing systems um, amounts go through. Right. Okay. And um, how did that work out for you, the Our New Zealand Party? Did, um, did you think that that was... Um, an effective use of your time? Uh, no, but, but I don't do anything by chance. Everything I do is deliberate. People think, you know, this guy's mad. What's he doing that for? There's always a reason why we do something. I'm just conscious of what I do and why I do it. Right. Okay. Well, so when did you... When did the, so our New Zealand was a registered political party. Does that mean you actually had, what, 500 members? It's... Yeah, we, we actually had more than that, yeah. Um, plus, prior to that... I've, I've sort of dabbled in politics for a while because I actually had the foolish belief that politics would be the answer if you could get decent people in with a good heart, that they would then do what they're meant to do, which is take the common will of the people into parliament and basically do what they want to have done. And if you cannot do so yourself, you hire the uncommon intelligence to bring it about. Um, but sadly, something happens when they go through there. And then, of course, upon looking and what I saw in structures overseas, they've got that thing battened down. Those hatches are battened down. And there's, I mean, these standing orders. I mean, you, any politician who's a direct representative of the people should be able to say, no, you can't shut me down. I'm here on their behalf, and this is what they want. Let's get it done. It doesn't happen that way, though. Right. Um, so you don't think that political entering the political process is is worthy of your time or effort anymore, or it's it's a it's a false chimera, if you like. Well, we'd have to guarantee no more rigged elections. Um, I personally, the facts and evidence. I think we could say I haven't got any facts and evidence on this particular thing, but I have a strong feeling that um, Jacinda Ardern, especially in her last one, wasn't stalled as opposed to elected. And There's no way that the South Island would would turn red. On trying to vote for Labour to keep the Greens out, come on! It's, everyone knows Labour and Greens are stuck at the hip. That's just a, it's a ridiculous notion to even think about. So you think the last election in New Zealand was rigged? I do. Okay. Um, as you say, you don't have any evidence for that, but you still think it was. No, that's right. But I'll always state when I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Well, so you, so mm, that would present a lot of people with a problem, don't you think? Because it's that would mean that a whole lot of people had to be in on that. No, you don't. See, this is what a lot of people don't realise. In order for a conspirator to be um, carried out, you only need control of a small number. Let's look at a news organisation for a start and all the problems we've been having with mainstream media. Who is the one who is the gatekeeper that decides what goes out over the news? It's your editor or your producer. That's it. They can kill stories at that level. You only control them. The rest can be running around and be very good people and doing damn good jobs and, and submitting awesome stories. But they could kill it because they've got a political affiliation that, no, nope, no, we don't really want that. Let's, uh, let's just move that aside. I'll put it right in the back page and give it some different title that no one's really going to read. Okay. This is, what, this is what happens in the country, and we, we both know it. I mean, I heard what you said before, and you're dead right about the literacy rates dropping in the country. And you mentioned the business roundtable and the initiative and all that. I found that interesting. Because as mainstream media, as you know, they're, they're great archaeologists. They love digging up the past. What they don't do, though, is they don't look at politicians, current and former, to any real degree. Like New Zealand Roundtable, look at Bolger, look at Muldoon, look at Longy. I can give you bank account numbers. I can give you payments per month they received into the accounts. Uh, why wasn't that ever investigated when those allegations came out? Robert Jones' investment. Are you saying that those Jordan? those people were bribed by by other overseas folk? Is that what you're saying to me? I'm saying the allegations are, and the evidence exists that now needs to be verified of specific bank account numbers, the banks that were held in, the names of the accounts, and who they were paid by. That's right. Like Gerard Parsky, former CIA. I've moved in these circles. I know what happens. I know politicians well, do you think and public all servants sounds... get bribed. Do you, you think all this sounds slightly mad? It's only mad to the people who don't want to know about it. Yeah, but I mean, in this particular case, your suggestion is that New Zealand prime ministers have been bribed by overseas sources with and 
and you've got evidence of the bank account numbers and things like that. That does sound Yeah, would you bad. like me to read them out? No, would you like no. me to read them out? Well, no, 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 no. I think that would probably be a waste of both of our time. Um, yeah. Morris, uh, just somebody else... See, uh, okay. So it would be fair to say that you are a conspiracy theorist. Would that be right? No, I'm a conspiracy factualist. Conspiracy okay. factualist. Right. It's so, no theory. So no. it's not theory. There are conspiracies out there. Um, who's running these Obviously, conspiracies? Obviously, otherwise you wouldn't be able to get charged with conspiracy by the police, would you? Okay. Who, who's running these conspiracies? Who's the prime conspirator, if you like? Well, take your pick. Um, let's look at let's look at this whole elephant in the room, because we're going to get there anyway. Let's look at this whole COVID situation. I'll make a statement, and I can back it with evidence. There is no pandemic, Michael. There never was. Right. The pandemic is the jab, and the jab is what's causing the carnage and the death. That is a fact. I can prove it. In order for you to prove me wrong, you have to prove that this does exist. And every Official Information Act request ever put out, including the Freedom of Information Act in America, proves that even the CDC does not have an isolated or purified virus. COVID-19 is only the symptoms, apparently, of the SARS-CoV-2. And how does that work? It doesn't. All they've done is rebrand the cold and flu and uh, made to order. Because where did the cold so, and flu so go? Let me, the, so let me get this right. Holiday? Come wait on. Wait on, wait on, wait on. Let me get this right. So there's no COVID virus. There is... All of the, there is the, no SARS-CoV-2 okay, right. so-called virus. There's no the COVID-19 COVID is the brand name for the symptoms. We've got to right. get this right. Okay, and but but all the deaths have been caused by the vaccination. Not all deaths in the country, no. But no, the, but the deaths attributed to COVID. The rate, definitely, I believe so, yes. Absolutely. So if I was unvaxxed... Why aren't we having autopsies? Okay, Why so, aren't we having autopsies? Why so, is MedSafe so, so me not right, reporting Kel GAB status? So let me get this right. If I was unvaxxed, I wouldn't die of COVID, would I? Because I haven't had the jab. Actually, it's all the unjabbed people who are fine. It's the jabbed and boosted people who have got problems and it's actually showing now with a trajectory of the information that unfortunately, if you are boosted, long term doesn't look good for you. So I would say, in fact, let's have a bet. I believe you're double jabbed and boosted. I'm triple jabbed. Well, I'm triple boosted. Yeah, I'm double jabbed and double boosted. That's right. Okay, cool. Put me in your wool for just five years. If you survive, you can tell, say, tell you what, you were you, you were wrong. Seriously, because I think in three to five years, unless you get something sorted out, Michael, you're going to be dead. Oh, gosh. Okay. All right. And finally... Um, and well, you take the challenge. No, listen. Can I be in your will? Uh, why would Calvin I? Out, listen, you're the last person to give money to. I'd, I'll give it to my children. I wouldn't give it to you. Okay. Now, now, now why, why, Michael? Because my children... I love humanity. my children. I don't, I don't know you, except at the end of a... Um, I'm fighting for your children too, Michael. You're not fighting for my children. Yes, I am. Because unless we stop what's going on here, they're not going to really have a future, are they? I mean, you talk about literacy rates dropping. You're going to have a damn sight more dropping soon with the mask and the oxygen deprivation of the brain that the kids are experiencing. They can't formulate words properly because they can't read expressions on the face and the mouth. And let's have a look at MedSafe's own data, shall we? For the, You're the your own Netflix mapping. show. Do you know that? You're your own Netflix show. You should have your own <laughs> show. I'd put you on, just, just, just to listen to you. Well, tell you what, the people who funded the stuff's rubbish, I mean, they, they spent what? I mean, there's debates as to what was we'll spent, 150 to 300, whatever, thousand dollars. We took it down for $10. We've smashed it with facts and evidence. So, geez, if that's what they've got, wasting taxpayers' money okay. on a witch hunt that they can't substantiate, something seriously wrong there. All right. Um, the Voices for Freedom, are you involved with them or not? We, we know a lot of the uh, regional people from Voices for Freedom, and we think they, they do a fantastic job. Me, I've always said from the start, I'm not particularly keen on the uh, hierarchy, but um, but the, the general Voices for Freedom people are amazing. What's wrong with the hierarchy, do you think? Oh, I just think you're a little elitist at times. Uh, that's those three women, you mean? No, oh, one in particular. But, yeah, I, I don't know the other two too well, so I won't form an opinion of them. Um, but yeah, a lot of people say, oh, you've got to be careful what you say. I don't, because I, I say what I mean, I mean what I say, and I back up everything I say. I mean, I've been accused of calling for the beheading of, <laughs> of people and um, extreme violence. When it comes to self-defense, self-preservation, looking after our families and children, you better believe I believe in, ex in extreme violence in those circumstances. Do I believe in just haphazardly going and snuffing someone and throwing them in the street? Not on your life. Okay, so... That some of the people that are involved in, for example, the COVID response, the official authorities, they're deserving of violence because of what they've done to New Zealanders? They're deserving of being arrested and put on trial. 
For what? For crimes against humanity. Right. Do you, you, you honestly believe that this is not a conspiracy against people and that people are actually profiting off the death of a lot of people? This, this operation, I mean, Pfizer's own documents prove that what we've been saying since for, for well over a year is exactly right. I mean, it's already come out, the jabbed and unjabbed now, there is no difference. So all the mandates, all the masks, all the loss of jobs are now useless. Why isn't this government catching up for a start? We've been trying to tell them for ages. New Zealand doctors speaking up the science didn't fit the purview of the uh, hit piece that uh, stuff circuit did all right. because they're intelligent people. Okay. They were people who, who had their Hippocratic oath do no harm. So they sided with the people to look after their patients. Why were they ousted? And then one more observation. That there's a few observations that any common sense logic and reason would absolutely smash any narrative the government's been pushing out. Where are the biohazard bins for the mask that's like a filter for this mythical virus in the air? Okay. Where, where's, Calvin, where's the, thank, <coughs> can I just say thank, that, yeah. thank you for joining us. I've given you, I think, a really good go, um, and I will be fascinated. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm actually very surprised, and I, I thank you for that. No, that's all right. I mean, you're entitled to your view, but I'm, I'll am i be fascinated to know what response we've got from the people who have listened to us to what you've had to say. I thank you for joining us this morning, um, and I wish you well. Thank you, Kelvin. But I won't be leaving you any of thank my money, much. I'm sorry. Okay, mate? Oh, then you know I'm right. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's just that I love my kids more than you, but there you go. Good on you. Thanks, Kelvin. See you later, mate. Bye-bye. All right. Now, you might understand, if you've listened to that, we sh I hope we play that, actually. Um, I hope that it is put on the platform. Why? Listen, we're always told by the media that they are conspiracy theorists, but until you hear from people themselves, you don't know if they are or if you aren't. You have now made up your mind. All right. That's Kelvin Elp, though, but there are different people out there who feel just as passionate but think in a different way.